And so today I'm going to run through how I do the oil changes on my own Land Cruiser. So being a mechanic for 17 years, I'm working on a Land Cruiser, a 2000 model Land Cruiser. So it's an older version. Hi there, it's Les from Hunting Gather Farmstead and if you're following us you'd know that we do a lot of kilometres driving here, there and everywhere. Um, this week was no different, we actually did 1500 k's this week, um, which is a lot, which is probably almost a thousand miles if you're not in Australia. Uh, and the thing about that is, we doing a lot of kilometres, um, our car gets worn out pretty quick. So to try and save money, uh, I do my own oil changes. I was actually a mechanic for 17 years um, and I'm just going to go through today and show you how I do my oil changes and try and save money. Um, we have a pretty busy life so I'm going to show you some practices that I've always done um, just to make sure that when I do my oil changes nothing gets forgotten. And the reason why we're doing the oil change, it's probably been about 12,000 kilometres since I've done the last one which is over. Uh, I do not recommend going over on your oil changes. Uh, doing oil changes is not an upsell for a mechanic, even though they'll, they make good money out of it. Uh, it's very important to get them done regularly. Um, anything more than 10,000, the quality of the oil starts to taper off. And um, what happens is, being a diesel, diesels are a very dirty sort of engine. Uh, and there's a lot of build up inside the engine. So if this is your first time ever doing an oil change on a Land Cruiser or a car similar, um, hang around, let me show you some simple tricks as well. First thing to do is to make sure you're parked on a flat surface. Um, you don't want to be parked on a hill because that makes it pretty hard to fill the oil up and to get a bit of an idea of uh, how much oil should go back in when you check the dipstick. So first thing you do is park on a pretty flat surface. So first thing we do is make sure the car's in neutral with the park brake on. So it's in neutral, you can see, and the park brake's on nice and tight. Second thing we do is we pop the bonnet, obviously. There's two buttons right there, and this is the one that we're gonna pop. You have to excuse me, it's really bright here. Um, sun's out. So once you've popped the bonnet, you'll come around to the front and you'll see that the bonnet is up. Um, but it's, there hasn't, you can't just lift it up. And the reason why is if you have close look in here, there's a little catch, there's a little lever. And all cars have that lever. So you have to lift on this one, you lift up, and then you can lift the bonnet. Uh, so you can see on this one, this is the latch. What that is, is that's actually a safety mechanism so that if you actually leave your bonnet open, it doesn't just fly back and then um, wacky windscreen when you go to high speeds. Secondly, we, we look at the motor. Here's the motor. Uh, you see this is a very common Land Cruiser motor. Um, this is the oil cut. And what I always do is if I'm doing an oil change, I take the oil cap off. And what I do is I sit it right there. And I sit it there because if I ever decide to get distracted because we've got so much going on I might have lost track of what I'm doing um, I can't shut the bonnet with that cap the bonnet won't look like it's closed so I always do that as a bit of a trick yeah I might damage the oil cap but if I actually ran the car out of oil that would be a way more expensive exercise I'm going to tell you a little story uh, a person walks into a parts store and asks for a 710 cap and the person behind the counter said excuse it's fly and the person behind the counter says, we don't sell 710 caps. And the person said, I want a 710 cap for my car. They make a 710 cap. It's got a seven cap, 710 cap written on it. And both were getting quite annoyed about the fact that there's no such thing as a 710 cap. Well, you always talk about perspective, right? Here is a 710 cap. Pretty funny, hey? Or not. But it's an old joke, um, and I'm not very good at jokes. So by now you've realized that's the oil, that's where the oil goes in the top. And you can probably see in there a little bit of what, what it looks like. The oil's not too bad, thankfully. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show you underneath the car. You have to excuse the kids, the, they're riding around, they decided to use this as a racetrack. 
while I'm working. They always do that. That's I think they practice that. My advice is when you're getting the oil, you need to change your oil filter at the same time. You do always do both. It's pointless doing one because it's silly. You put nice clean oil in and then it's going through a dirty oil filter. Got him. So you can actually see where the oil filter on the oil filter is on this. It's very easy. Um, you look around the side here and the oil filter is right there. This one's pretty cool because it's actually got a bit of a catch tray here. Um, so oil will run out of that filter a little bit, not much. Uh, most of it drains back down into the motor, but when we take that off, you will see a bit come out. Next thing you want to do is actually find the sump. Um, and so I'm just going to grab my, I don't want to get down back up again. So I'm just going to take a, a um, drain bowl with me just so I can catch the oil and I'll go through at the same time. Here we go. So I'm going to show you underneath my car. Haven't cleaned it for a while. I haven't got much love. But to find the sump plug, you need to find the motor. And this is basically the engine here. You can see straight under the front there, further back's the gearbox. But this is the sump part here. Always look for the sump plug. Here's the sump plug right here. You can see that just there. I know what size that sump plug is. I know it's a 14 mil, just from experience. Uh, my advice is always make sure you've got a, a good quality spanner onto that. The last thing you want to do is round that off. Knowing what size uh, oil capacity your sump is, is always important too. When you change the oil, you don't want to have a five litre container and then a 10 litre sump and then it overflowing and making a huge mess. I know this one is a 10 litre sump and when you go to the parts store to order the parts for your car, you always ask them how much oil should it take and what kind of filter and what kind of oil. And they can also guide you if you don't have a clue. Don't just go and buy any oil, you need to use the recommended oil for your car. So I've got the oil, I've got the filter, and I know that it takes approximately 10 litres in this car because that's what they it says in the actual manual. So let's get the oil out and I'm going to show you how messy it is. When you do this, make sure you put your tray in the right spot and have it so that there's a long shoot. It'll shoot out pretty fast. So you want to have it just so, just back a bit when it trickles back at the end, it won't go all over the ground. But also when you're doing it, um, it'll go into the tray. All right, let's get to it. So get it, make sure it's nice and firm on there. Oh, well I did this one last time. Obviously I tightened it nice. So with every sump plug, it either has an O-ring or a gasket or a, a washer of some type um, so that it seals nice around there. So when you take it off, make sure that that comes off with it. Um, being a Land Cruiser, I know that it probably won't and they never seem to, but um, before you get it off, see if you can get your fingernail in behind it oh and look at that i just broke it if you're going to do it make sure you can get yourself another washer that goes on there um, so you don't have to do what i have to do now and go get another washer so here we go i'm going to undo it and watch it all come racing out there it is you will get oil on yourself be prepared for that uh, and diesel oil is horrible and black and you can see all over my fingers so you can see how far it shoots out, so always just pull the tray back a little bit as you're going so that it doesn't go all over the ground. And now I'm going to go get myself a washer, a new washer for this. Uh, one thing I also didn't mention is to, when you're doing your oil change, run it, get your car nice and warm so the oil is at its thinnest. Obviously don't, it's doing it straight after a long drive, the oil will be hot so you need to be really careful about that. But just going for a normal drive in the area. Um, just warming up the engine oil makes it much easier to change. I actually put a flush through this one because it had been a little while over and I wanted to make sure that the oil had been had cleaned out properly when we do it. So using an engine oil flush through it, speak to your local Repco or local parts place and they'll, they'll point you in the right direction of what sort of stuff to use. Back in a sec. All right, so I've just chucked the sun plug in. Just make sure you can do it up with your fingers a few times. It's got really windy here, I'm really sorry about that. Um, do it up with your fingers as far as you can. You don't want to cross thread the sump putting it in. So yeah, once I've done that, just tighten it up. Get as tight as you can. Nice and tight. Just a bit of a recommendation. 
Uh, my life's pretty crazy. I've always got something happening and getting interrupted while doing this sort of work is guaranteed. Uh, I think I've been interrupted probably, I don't know, seven or eight times just by trying to do this. So if for some crazy reason you get taken away from your job, um, if kids are just annoying, you just say, wait a minute and tighten your sump plug up. The last thing you want to do is uh, leave the sump plug loose and have it fall out. Uh, that'll cost you a fortune and you don't want to go down that line. My advice is if for some crazy reason you do have to walk away, leave the ring spanner sitting on it. Because then you know when you pack your tools away at the end of the day and you're missing your spanner, you'll go, where's my spanner? Oh, it's on the sump. Must have left the bolt loose. So that's just a good little trick to make sure that you don't ever leave your sump plug loose. That goes for any bolts really. If you ever get dragged away, just leave it hanging off it. Because you'll know, once you pack your tools away, if it's missing, that's good. You can go back and find it. Now let's get up there and finish off this service. All right. So we've done the oil, we've drained the oil, and we've put the sump plug in, and we've tightened it. So now what we're going to do, we're going to change the oil filter. Um, and then we'll go from there. So your filter on this one I've shown you earlier on is on the passenger side of the car. Uh, I'll point to it and show you how we're going to get it off. So to remove an oil filter, there's multiple tools you can buy. Uh, I choose to use this one when I need to. It goes down from that size all the way down to a small size like that. So depending on the size of the oil filter of your car, um, it's pretty universal, it's good. Um, sometimes it can be a bit restricted to get in there. I tend to be lucky enough that I don't need to use it. Um, I can manage to be able to undo them without it, which is handy. But, you know, sometimes I do have to use them because the last person that did it got a bit carried away and over tightened it. We'll give this a crack and see how it goes. You can just see this is the oil filter. This is a great car to do it on because it's a nice little tray. Um, to catch any oil that does come out of it. And let's see if anything comes out. I've actually had the car sitting for a little while. Um, so it generally um, drains back no problem at all. So this one fits quite snug on there. It's actually pretty tight. You just push it on. And then you, what you actually do, this one's not actually going on very well. It's kind of sucked because it normally goes on pretty good. And then you just tighten it like that. Well, it's not even going to go on. Look at that. Oh, well, let's see how it goes. So today, um, it's making me look like a bit of an idiot. I'm pretty sure I used this one last time. Um, I do have another one, but I don't ever use it. And I don't actually know what it is. Uh, most of the time, I can just get my hands onto it. There we go. And so we've got this one coming undone now, which is nice. Try and get this paint flakes off it before it before it uh, comes off, just so that nothing falls into the actual oil filter um, hole. So here we go, take it off. And you can see a bit of oil still has come out. So there's a couple of little tricks I want to show you. Um, just to make sure that you never get caught out with a leaking oil filter. Firstly, the thing to check is to make sure that the O-ring is still on the oil filter. You can see it's still on there, which is great. But also, um, I advise that you check on the, on the face of it where it goes to make sure that there isn't another O-ring. I have in my past um, noticed, well, I actually got caught out. I changed the oil filter and had a look for the O-ring and by some crazy reason uh, there was actually one left on it from the last time it was serviced and it seemed to seal by some miracle. Then what happened when I changed it, it leaked between the two rubbers. So what there should be is a metal face here, as you can see, it's nice and clean. So there is no other one on here, but sometimes these just fall off. You can see they come off pretty easy, just like that. And just with the heat of them, they tend to stick to the actual um, face of that. Okay, so we've got a new filter. 
You can see there's a new one, Z334, pretty common. Um, always make sure you use a good quality filter. This one's Ryko. These guys have been around for a long time uh, and it meets the standards that it needs to be. I think it's called an OEM standards, which is what this suits or what this um, meets the standards for it, which is good. Um, so when you put it back on, grab a bit of grease, run it around the O-ring. Just means it's a bit easier and good for a seal. So next time it comes off, make sure the face is still clean where it's going with the oil filter. Same as the, the sump plug, make sure when you do it, you can do it up a few turns before you use a, a wrench. I actually go all the way till it touches and then just turn it half a turn to a turn. And there we have it, that's done. Oil filter's on, a bit of a wipe over, make it look pretty. I'll put that in there and we'll soak up all that oil. Right, so where we're at, oil filter's done, sump plug has been, or sump has been drained, sump plug's been put back in. And of course, the oil, oil filler cap is off, as it sits in the catch for me. So now we have to fill it up. So this is a big high capacity sump, it takes 10 litres. This comes with a funnel, as you can see. You take the lid off and you put this funnel on. I don't know about you, but I reckon I'm gonna spill that putting it in. Now, I'm lucky enough to have a pourer, so I'm gonna use the pourer, it just makes it quicker and easier. So this one's pretty cool. This one's got a special little bit in there to, to lock it shut until you get it in there. Then you just push the button like that. Just like that, quick and easy. Always bring it back down so it's locked. You don't make a mess. Okay, so the secret here is Find out what your sump capacity is and how much oil is supposed to go in it. And then my advice is to get to about 80% of that and fill it with oil to 80%. And then um, check and make sure with the dipstick that you're pretty close to the right level. Okay, so the more you do this, the more you'll work out how much oil um, it takes on certain parts of the dipstick, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna check it now and just see where we're at on the dipstick. Before you check it, make sure you always wipe it down first because the oil runs down into the dipstick tube from the top and can give you a false reading and look like it over full. So you can see here on my dipstick, it's a little bit over and that's with about eight liters in it. I'm not bothered by that. And if you have a look at this, you can probably see how far over it is. I wouldn't recommend ever going more than that uh, at any point, whether you're finished or not, you really want it pretty close to that dot. On some cars it's a line, some cars it's a crisscross. Uh, it just depends on the car. But you really don't want to go too far over it. If it's like the distance between the two dots again, you've overfilled it. Um, so that's why it's important to work out how much you need, then put about 80% into it and then check it from there. So what we have to do now uh, it's showing a little bit over, which is okay for one of these, it's not a problem. Just put the dipstick back in for now. What we need to do is need to run it. Take out the oil container. Put the oil filler cap on, or the 710 cap. Um, make sure it's nice and tight. Don't over tighten it. Uh, so we've got oil in it. The oil filter's done. We know that the, there's no gasket left on there other than the one that it knew, the new gasket that it came with. So now it's good to start. Remembering that we put it into neutral and we started it, we had the handbrake on and then we can start it from there. And we'll just let it run for a couple of minutes. While it's running, we'll uh, check and make sure that the gasket isn't leaking or anything crazy like that. 
Right, so we're in the car, and remember, foot on the clutch, make sure it's in neutral. I'm still a bit paranoid about that. When I was a junior uh, apprentice mechanic, I thought it was in neutral, and it was actually the wear in the gear stick, and it wasn't in neutral, and I started the car up, and it actually started, which is pretty cool, except that it ran through a wall. So, a bit paranoid still, keep the handbrake on, in neutral, foot on the clutch. Then what we do, we look for the oil light, or the oil gauge, and on mine, the gauge is up here in the corner. So you want to check that, watch that gauge, and make sure that it starts. So once it starts, you want to watch that gauge. It's taking a while, not ideal. Gauge has come up a bit, which is good. This is the oil pressure it has. So what we do now, we go out and we have a look around and make sure there's no leaks on the oil filter and make sure there's no leaks on the sump plug. See down there, even though that there's a, um, a bit of oil residue left over, you can see that it's actually, um, there's no drips coming out, which is good. Then just recheck it. And then we just check the sump plug, which isn't dripping either. It's a good day. It's a great day. All right, so next thing we do, shut it off, and then we check the oil level in the dipstick again. All right, so here we are. Let's check it. With a diesel, it's pretty much black, um, or close to, straight away. Now if you have a look there, it's pretty much, apart from the little drag mark, it's pretty much just above, above that dot, which is okay. So we're done. What we're gonna do now, um, just go over and just check everything that I normally do. Make sure that the oil filter's tight, the dipstick's back into place, oil filler cap's on, um, just make sure I haven't left any rag or anything underneath the bonnet. Um, and then clean up my oil and clean up the mess. And then we'll take it for a drive. Make sure all your old oil goes back in the old container. Take it to your local council. Normally they have a recycling facility where they take your oil for free. If not, it might cost you a few bucks. Um, take your oil filter as well and they'll take it from there. Don't throw it in the bin, don't be a jerk. Uh, it just goes into the into our um, soils and then goes out into waterways or wherever. Just, just take the recycling center, get them to deal with it responsibly. And same with your filter. Other than that, it's all good. There's not much else to tell you. I think we're done. Clean up, make sure your bonnet's shut properly afterwards. You don't have any pliers like I've got over there left on the battery, anything silly like that. Um, go around and have a quick check. If you have any questions, chuck them in the comments below. Happy to help you out. Um, mechanic with 17 years experience before I become a fireman. Uh, and these, I love these cars. These are easy to work on. We're done. Thanks for watching from our family to yours. God bless.